Powell Crosley Jr. was born on September 18, 1886. At the age of seven, his family moved from Walnut Hills to College Hill, where Crosley eventually attended the Ohio Military Institute. After graduating, Powell entered UC's College of Engineering. Although he enjoyed the mechanical aspects of the program, he found that his math skills weren't strong enough and soon dropped out. Always fascinated by automobiles, Crosley went to Connersville, Indiana, where he attempted to build his first car, called the Marathon 6. However, the panic of 1907 quickly dried up his capital, and he was forced to return to College Hill as a failure. His father, Powell Crosley Sr., a very prominent lawyer in Hamilton County, had always wanted his son to become a lawyer, so he talked him into enrolling into UC's College of Law. Powell found the study of law quite boring, and after one year left school. He then had a brief stint with a magazine journal devoted to motor touring, and shortly thereafter moved to Muncie, Indiana, where he managed a struggling automobile company. In 1916, Crosley returned to Cincinnati to organize his second car company. But due to a severe lack of long-term capital, this venture failed as well. Undaunted, Crosley borrowed $1,500 from his father and bought a mail-order accessory business called the American Automobile Accessories Company. This time, what later became known as the Crosley Midas Touch asserted itself, and by 1921, Crosley had become a very rich businessman. Ironically, the item his company sold that made him rich was a combination radiator cap flag holder. America had gone to war in 1917, and everyone wanted to show their support. The radiator cap had three mounts where small American flags could be displayed. In 1921, the consumer item everyone was talking about was the radio, but it cost about $120. Crosley purchased a book called The ABCs of Radio and proceeded to build his own radio for a fraction of the cost. Crosley soon parlayed his interest in the radio into a business. By 1922, he renamed the Automobile Accessories Company the Crosley Radio Corporation and moved to Coleraine Avenue in Camp Washington. His first radio, the Harco, sold for $15. By underselling his competitors, it wasn't long before he became known as the Henry Ford of radio. In March of 1922, Crosley founded a little radio station known as WLW. By 1928, he had a license to transmit 50,000 watts, and WLW became known as the nation's station. Crosley then convinced the federal government, including President Roosevelt, to liberalize transmission wattage, which enabled 500,000 watts of power to emanate from WLW's tower to all parts of the nation, and in some cases, the world. Such future legends as the Mills Brothers, Red Skelton, Fats Waller, and Doris Day performed, and Ma Perkins, the nation's first radio soap opera, was staged at WLW's studios. Crosley also tried his hand at making numerous other items. He even built his own airplane. One invention that proved a great success was the Shelvador refrigerator. It was the first refrigerator to have shelves attached to the inside door, allowing for more storage. It became the most popular household appliance in America. In the late 1930s, he invented a facsimile machine, developed the first production car radio, and introduced the first porcelain-based radio vacuum tubes, which other radio manufacturers bought from him. In 1939, Powell returned to his first passion when he introduced the Crosley automobile, featured at the 1939 World's Fair. It was the nation's first small car and got excellent gas mileage. However, he was ahead of the times, as most Americans were not ready for a small economical model. The operation eventually lost money to the tune of over a million a year. And in 1952, Crosley decided to close the operation. Ironically, just five years later, the small car came into its own with the likes of the Rambler, the Falcon, and the Volkswagen. Another pursuit that many Cincinnatians always will appreciate was Crosley's 1934 purchase of the Cincinnati Reds. After he obtained controlling interest in the Reds, he was responsible for building a strong club, engineering night baseball in 1935, and hiring the famous game announcer, Red Barber. 
Over the years, Crosley served as a member of the board of directors for the Fifth Third Union Trust Company, the Northside Bank and Trust Company, and the Bank of Commerce and Trust, as well as Transworld Airlines. He was also a member of numerous organizations. One of Crosley's most important legacies is the Crosley Foundation, which he established in 1946. Over the years, the foundation has awarded millions of dollars to cultural, social, and educational institutions, including the zoo, the symphony, children's hospital, the art museum, the University of Cincinnati, and provided millions for the construction of WCET Studios and the Crosley Communications Center. Entrepreneur, inventor, radio broadcaster, industrialist, businessman, automobile developer, and sportsman, Powell Crosley Jr. had done it all.